Okay, so here are some examples of solving logarithmic equations when there are logs on one side and the other side may not have logarithms. Um, what we want to do first is you want to find your logarithm. You want to isolate it to move all the logarithms to one side. Um, and you want to write it as a single logarithm. Now, this is already set up for us. We only have one logarithm. It's written as a single logarithm. It's not multiplied by anything, adding anything. Okay. Then our next step is to rewrite this in exponential form because um, this is just kind of a generic form. Remember that log base b of x equaling a means that b to the a power is equal to x. Okay, And so notice the base of our log is the base of our exponent. And all we're doing is saying b to the a equals this quantity x that we were taking the log of. And it just takes a couple of practice runs um, for you to get used to that rhythm or um, to the way that logarithms are set up and the way you invert them with exponential. So let's look at this one. Again, we're all set up and ready to go here. Um, all we have to do is rewrite this in exponential form. Uh, so here's our base is one third. So we will have one third to the, this is our power over on the other side of the equal sign, to the negative two power is equal to the quantity that we're taking the log of x. And now the last thing we're going to do here is just go ahead and evaluate that. We could do negative, excuse me, one-third to the negative two power, which you can do on your calculator. You want to be careful to put the one-third in parentheses, um, or your calculator may <laughs> mess up for you. Or you can think of it as um, one-third to the negative two power um, would make this three to the positive two, or eight or excuse me, nine. I was doing two to the third. Apologize for that. Let's fix that, make it look a little better. So we get the answer x is nine. And you do, as before, when you solve a logarithmic equation, you do have to take your answer back up and make sure that if you plug it in for x, you won't be taking log of zero or a negative number, because that's not part of the domain. Nine would be just fine here. So our answer is x equals 9. Okay, here's another example. Notice on the right-hand side, I just have 64, no logarithms involved. On the left-hand side, I have a logarithm, but I need to isolate it. Notice there's an 8 multiplied in front. So that's the first step, is I'm going to divide both sides by 8, so that I just have the logarithm on this side. So I have the log of x over 10 to the negative fifth power is equal to, and 64 divided by 8 is 8. Now that I'm set up, I can go ahead and rewrite this in exponential form. It's important to remember that if there's no base given, it's automatically base 10. Okay? So 10 is our base to the eighth power, that number over on the other side, equals what we were taking the log of, 10 excuse me, x over 10 to the negative fifth. We want to solve that, so we want to get x by itself. We're going to multiply both sides by 10 to the negative fifth. And when I do that, I get x equals 10 to the negative fifth times 10 to the eighth, which I could multiply out, or I could notice that they are both 10 raised to a power, and remember our Rule for exponents, when you're multiplying, you add the exponent. Okay. So we get x equals 10 to the negative 5 plus 8, or 10 to the third power. Okay, so again, isolate the log first, then rewrite it in exponential form, and then solve. And again, our last step would be to go ahead and put that back up here. Um, 10 to the third power would give me a positive number there, so I would be just fine. All right, next problem. Um, notice this one, my log is already isolated. I don't have anything happening to it. 
Um, so we can go ahead and rewrite this in exponential form. Our base is 3, so we're going to have 3 to the second power equals whatever we're taking the log of, which is a big thing here. It's x minus 5 divided by 2x plus 8. And then we're going to go ahead and solve that equation. So we go ahead and do 3 squared is 9. And then we solve the equation. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2x plus 8. Make sure you go ahead and distribute. That gives me 18x Sorry there, had a little bump of thing. <laughs> Hope that didn't hold you off too long. Okay, so we have 18x plus 72 equals x minus 5. And then we just follow the regular routine for solving. Oh, that is a bad color to use. Can't see what I write, wrote. And divide by 17. Get x equals negative 77 over 17. And then I want to go ahead and look back up here and make sure that I don't get a negative answer here. So you would plug that in for x. Um, and make sure you don't get a negative number. It does come out okay because you get negative in the numerator um, as well as negative in the denominator. When they divide, it gives you a positive number here. So it is okay. As ugly as it is, that's our, that's our answer. Okay, new scenario here. Um, remember we wanted to isolate the log. We have logs all isolated to the right hand side. However, we want a single logarithm there. So we're going to use our property of logs. They're both base 4. We have addition here. Our properties of logs told us that we could rewrite that as log base 4 of the two quantities multiplied by one another. So we have x plus 6 times x minus 6 equals 3. Okay, we're going to go ahead and now that we have that written as a single logarithm, we're going to rewrite it in exponential form. So our base was 4 to the third power equals the quantity we're taking the log of. Now if I multiply these things out, 4 to the third power is 64, and x plus 6 times x minus 6 is x squared minus 36. I want to solve that. I notice I only have an x squared there, so I'm going to go ahead and add 36 to both sides to get the x squared all by itself. I get x squared is 100, and to remove x squared, we take the square root of both sides and put plus or minus. So we get plus or minus 10. Now we need to take those answers back up and make sure they don't give us a negative answer. Um, if I put 10 in, here I would get positive 16. If I put 10 in here, I get positive 4, so 10 is okay. If I did negative 10, on the other hand, I would get negative 10 plus 6 gives me a negative 4 here and a negative 16 there. So my only answer is x equals positive 10 because negative 10 made me take the log of a negative number. All right, here we go again. Again, we want to write this as a single logarithm on the left-hand side. Um, so they're both log base 27. We had 
subtraction here, which remember we rewrite as division with a single log. So you have 2x minus 1 over 5x plus 3 is equal to 1 third. Now that we have a single logarithm, we're going to rewrite that in exponential form. So we have 27 was our base to the 1 third power equals that whole thing that we are taking the log of. 2x minus 1 times 5x plus 3. We're going to go ahead and simplify 27 to the 1 third power is 3 because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And now we solve. I'm going to multiply both sides by 5x plus 3 to clear that denominator. And I get 15x plus 9 equals 2x minus 1. We get the x's on one side and everything else on the other. And I get 13x equals negative 10. Last step, divide both sides by 13. Okay, so we get the answer x equals negative 10 13. Again, you want to go back up to the original problem. Make sure you're not going to get any negative values. Um, if I put negative 10 over 13 into this first one, notice I would get negative 20 13 minus 1, which is a larger negative number. So my only answer did not work. So this would be, you could either say no solution or undefined. Because our only answer we came up with did not work. All right, here we go again. So we again want to write it as a single logarithm. We use our properties of logs. They were both base 2, so we know we can combine them. We had addition here, so we know that addition, when we write them as a single logarithm, becomes multiplication. Now that it is written as a single log, our next step is to rewrite it in exponential form. Our base was 2 to the, over here, second power, equals 3x minus 1 times x plus 1. Do a little simplifying on the left here. Um, 2 squared is 4. On the right, if I FOIL that out, I get 3x squared plus 3x minus x minus 1. By my like terms, here's what I have. Notice I have x squared and an x, so I'm going to have to factor to solve this or use the quadratic formula. So I need it to be equal to 0. And I end up with 0 is equal to 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. Now I want to see if that factors, and if it does, that's the way I'm going to go. If not, I would go with the quadratic formula. Fortunately, this does factor. It factors as 3x plus 5 times x minus 1. We're going to set both of those factors equal to 0. and solve them. So we get x equals negative 5 thirds and x equals 1. We again need to go back up and check to make sure we don't get any negative values. Notice if I put negative 5 thirds in for this logarithm, I would get negative 5 thirds plus 1 <clears throat> would give me a negative 2 thirds. So negative 5 thirds is not going to work. 1, however, is fine in both. It doesn't give me a 0 and it doesn't give me a negative number. So my answer here is x equals 1. Here's one involving natural logs, but they work the same way. We want to first write them as a single logarithm. They're both natural logs, so I can go ahead and do that. I have subtraction here, which we rewrite as division. So I'd have x divided by x minus 3 equals 7. Now that I have one logarithm, I'm going to rewrite that in exponential form. 
Remember, natural logs are base e. So I have e to the seventh power equals x over x minus 3. Now, e to the seventh power is a rather large number. So I'm just going to leave it as e to the seventh power and remember that that's just a number. And I'm going to try to solve for x. The first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by x minus 3 so that I can clear the denominator there. And I get x equals x minus 3 times e to the 7. Go ahead and distribute. I get e to the 7th times x minus 3 e to the 7th is equal to x. Now remember we're solving for x. So what we want to do here is get the x's all on the same side. So I'm going to subtract this e to the seventh x. Again, e to the seventh is just a number, but it was a particularly large number, so I just wanted to leave it that way. Okay. I'm going to have to, I apologize, I'm going to have to take this up here to the top. Makes it a little messy but I ran out of room. Okay, next step. We're going to pull an x out of each of those. So I have the x totally by itself. And notice I have negative 3 e to the 7th equals x times 1 minus e to the 7th. And my last step is to divide by 1 minus e to the 7th so that I have x completely alone. So my answer here, which you could do some simplification if those negative signs are bothering you, um, would look like this. x equals negative 3 e to the 7th over 1 minus e to the 7th. Ugly answer, but it is an answer nonetheless. Okay. You would probably want to check that to make sure that it does not give you a negative answer. However, um, notice that in the top I have a negative number. In the bottom, 1 minus e to the 7 would be negative. Divided by negative would be positive number, a large pos or a positive number. So um, we should be okay in both cases here. All right, here is one more. This one, again, a little different for our last example. Um, because notice I have multiple natural logs. I'm taking a natural log of the natural log of x. I do have a single logarithm on the left-hand side. So we're going to go ahead and start with our first step, which would be to rewrite this in exponential form. Now here's the quantity I'm taking the natural log of. So, and here is my first logarithm. Again, base e, because it's a natural log. So if I rewrite this, I get e to the fifth power is equal to the quantity I was taking the natural log of, which was the natural log of x in this case. Well, how would I solve this? Well, I have the natural log isolated on one side by itself, so what I'm going to do is rewrite this in exponential form. Again, it's base e, so I go e to the, and this looks a little weird, but to the e to the fifth power equals x. Okay, so that one was done completely. And again, I could use my calculator to find that number, but it is a huge number. So I'm just going to leave it as e to the e to the fifth power. A little crazy looking. The question was a little crazy looking to start with, but there are some examples to help you work through those problems.